Yeah. And now they don't even talk about heaven. Right. They do all their talking about this world and this temporary plane and the riches and the wealth and the prosperity of this world. Amen? That's true. First, they did away with hell. Now they've done away with heaven. Mm -hmm. Now all they talk about is the world. Amen? The Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen? There is still a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen? Hallelujah. And this world is still only here for a little while. Right. Amen. The Bible says life is a vapor. It appears for a little while, but then it vanishes away. Amen. Every one of us have seen loved ones pass away. Every one of us have stood by the graveside of loved ones to realize life is a temporal thing. And sooner or later, every one of us go by way of the grave. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. If you have your Bible with you this morning, open it to Isaiah the thirty-fourth, the uh, fifty-fourth. I'm sorry, Isaiah the fifty-fourth <coughs> chapter. Isaiah fifty-four. In the day that we live in, with the news being the way that it is, some people I've heard them say, "Well, I don't watch the news; it's too depressing." Yeah. Amen. Amen. They don't. They just do not hear what's going on because it depresses them to hear of all the bad things. Amen? Right. And so many people that you come in contact with today are depressed. They're stressed. They're oppressed. They're down and out. They feel like they're just their back's against the wall. They don't have anybody to count on. Everybody's let them down. It's, it's woe is me. Amen? There's so much going on in their lives that they just simply cannot fathom the thought that there is hope. Amen? That's the, some people's attitude. It just seems like it's hopeless. Amen? Right. That there's no, there's no reason for going on. Someone said this week that there was just no reason to live any longer. Amen? It Amen. just seemed like everything was hopeless. And you run across that. More times than not, people that you talk to are depressed. And they're down and they're out. Right. And the sad fact of the matter is that many of those people that you talk to that say things like that, you know, they're depressed and they're just, they don't have anything and they just don't, everything's going wrong. A lot of those people you talk to are Christians. Right. Born again. Believers. I'm not just talking about just in name only. These are people who have actually accepted the Lord, but they, are, they, they feel depressed and they Amen. feel down and out. They feel beat up. Amen. Right. They feel weather worn. They feel like they've been rolled hard and put up wet. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. They feel like that, that just life is just too hard on them. Right. And do we get that way as believers? Many times, yes. Believers get that way. Amen. Do we, does that make us unsaved? No, it doesn't make us unsaved. Does it make it right that we feel that way? No, it doesn't make it right that we feel that way. Because God has given us promise after promise after promise in His Word, Brother Sleece, that He's with us. That He is with us. That He'll never leave us. That He'll never forsake us. That He'll always be with us. He'll always go with us. That there is reason to have hope today. Amen. If you're born again and trusting in Jesus, hope should be yours. Peace should be yours. Now, before I talk about that, I want to let you know that if you're out there today, and you do not know Jesus, and you do not, you have not accepted Him as Lord and Savior, you, do, you have not put your faith in His finished work, you have not been washed in the blood, then let me assure you today, you should feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. All right. Listen, we got a whole crowd of preachers today mm -hmm. that aim to make everybody feel better about themselves, even if they're unsaved. Right. They don't want to make you feel bad. They want you to leave feeling good about yourself even though you're on your way to hell. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I want you to know today, and I know it doesn't make me very popular or have very many friends, but if you don't know Jesus... If you haven't been washed in the blood of the Lamb, if you don't have a personal relationship with Him and your faith in His finished work, you need to feel hopeless today because you don't have any hope, amen, of a tomorrow in Him unless you accept Him. I'm talking spiritually speaking. You are on your way to hell if you have not put your faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work. Right. I don't want you to come in here lost today and go out feeling good about your life and, and the 
the outlook of things because your outlook ain't good. Amen? Your outlook is not a good one, Brother Dave, if you don't have Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. If, 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 if you have not accepted it, if you have not been washed in the blood, if you have not been born again, like Jesus told Nicodemus, that you must be born again. If you have not had that experience, if you're not in relationship, in covenant relationship with Him, you need to feel hopeless today because your future is not a good one. Amen? You are going to go to hell. The subject that your pastor no longer talks about, maybe he never talked about. He don't mention sin. He don't mention hell. Your future looks bright even though you don't know Jesus. No, your future is a bad one. If you don't know Jesus. If you leave this life. Let me see if I can make it as plain as this old redneck preacher can. If you leave this life without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But Brother Billy, what about Allah? Listen to me. What about Muhammad? No, listen to me. What about my priest I confess to? No, listen to me. If you do not accept Jesus Christ, put your faith in His finished work, and if you are not born again, you will split hell wide open. There is only one way to get to heaven today, and that is through Jesus Christ. Amen. There's only one way to get to hell today, and that is by rejecting Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So today, if you're not saved, you don't have any hope until you are saved. Come on. Amen? You're drowning. You're going down for the last time. Your next breath may be your last breath. Mm -hmm. Say, preacher, you trying to scare me? You better believe it. Because if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, your next breath, if it's your last breath, you will find yourself in a devil's hell. Come on. Amen? Amen? You will find yourself in eternity lost forever without God. Amen. Amen? That ain't my subject this morning, but I can preach that. Amen? It's not being preached enough today that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen? Amen. That heaven is real and hell is still hot and it burns forever and forever and forever. Yes. So that's where you're going to spend eternity. That's what your future looks like. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you do not accept this Jesus that we talk of, that we speak of, if you do not put your faith in Him, Come on. that's your future. Amen. It's not very bright. Right. You better cling to your best life now because this is the best as it's going to get for yeah. you. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Without Jesus, eternity is going to be horrible for you. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. True. Horrible for you. But if you're born again today, and see so many try to claim the promises of this book, and they don't know the one of whom this book speaks. Amen? Listen to me. How would it be today if I heard that somebody rich died? And I, and I heard, well, they're going to read his will. And I walked in there and I sat down and I said, hey, I want my peace. I want my part. Yeah. I want what I got coming to me. All right. If you don't know Jesus today, you don't want what's coming to you. Amen. Right. But if you walked in there, see, you don't get nothing unless you're an heir. Right. It don't matter how rich that man was, Brother David. It doesn't matter how much money he had. Right. Amen. True. If you are not an heir, you don't get none of it. Absolutely. If you're not made an heir through the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't get none of these promises. Amen? These promises don't belong to you. I see people all the time, amen, that are lost as a ball in high weeds and you can't convince them otherwise and they're claiming the promises in the book. These pro the promises in this wheel ain't yours unless you've been named an heir. And the only way to be named an heir is be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen? To be a child of the King. To be a child of the King. Amen? Hallelujah. So we've got people claiming the promises that the promises don't belong to until you accept Jesus. Now am I saying it takes a special sector, a special group of people? No. Whosoever will, let him call on the name of the Lord. Amen? And you'll be saved. Whosoever will, let him come to the water and drink freely. Put your faith in Jesus and you can experience what I'm talking about today. If you're born again, if you're washed in His blood, if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you have no business really being depressed today. Amen. You have no business being oppressed. Mm -hmm. Now listen, I'm not kicking you and bashing you over the head if you've been that way lately. 
I'm just trying to tell you it don't have to be that way. Wow. But Brother Billy, you don't understand things. Yeah, I do understand things. All of us have things come into our life. And all of we don't none of us walk around all the time feeling the victory. Amen. But we need to realize today that regardless of what's going on in our life, Brother David, God is still on the throne. We are an heir to the promises of God. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. We are part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been called out of darkness into His marvelous light. We've been raised up out of the miry clay and our feet are on the rock. We may be in the gutter, but if we're in the gutter with Jesus, we got what we need. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'd rather be in the gutter with Jesus than on the hill, than the mansion on the hilltop without Him. Amen. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be a janitor in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the rich and the mighty. Hallelujah. Because this world and its wealth only lasts for a little while. Amen. Amen. Temporal. They're only temporal. King David would write some trust in chariots. Yeah. And shunning horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord oh, really? our God. Oh, Amen. Yeah. If you're trusting in the world today, you're going to come up short, oh. way short. If you're trusting in your money today, you will soon find that your money does not hold the answer that you need. Amen. If you believe that money brings happiness, I want you to look at the suicide rate among those that had plenty of money. The stories and the headlines of Hollywood movie stars that either, that either took a gun and shot himself or took too many pills. Amen. Miserable. Miserable. Money couldn't do it. The fame could not do it. Only Jesus can do it today. Only Jesus can satisfy your thirsty soul today. Only Jesus can lift you up and give you peace and give you hope. And the sooner we realize that our hope is not in this world, our hope is not in our wallet, our hope is not in our bank account, our hope is not in Washington, D.C. Our hope rides on the wings of love this morning. Rides on the clouds. Hallelujah. It is all merciful, almighty God. Yes. Rules from heaven on high. My, my, my. Praise he God. is our hope. Praise the Lord. In Him we trust today. Come on. So go with me if I can read this morning. I feel the preacher stirred up. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Let her rip. My, my, my. Isaiah, the 54th chapter. <clears throat> One of these days I'm going to learn how to preach. I'm going to look into some courses or something. Isaiah 54 in the fourth verse. Isaiah 54 and 4. Fear not. Now listen, I realize before you write me, theologian, before you try to correct me, I realize who God's talking to here. God's talking to His people. Right. God's talking to His servants. Oh. In that day, I also realize that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I realize He is no respecter of persons. I realize that if He promised He would do something for Jacob, if He obeyed Him, He'll do it for Billy Douglas if he obeys him. Amen. I believe that if he'll do it for those that were in covenant through faith in that which was to come in the Old Testament, he'll do it for us on this side of the cross that are in covenant with him uh, with our faith in that which was finished on the cross of Calvary. Amen. I know this morning who he's talking to. He's talking to you. He's talking to them, yes. But he's talking to me. <laughs> Amen. I know who he's talking to. Right. So listen to this. Let me see if I can get into the scripture. Fear not. Somebody say fear not. Fear not. Oh, we could use that today. Amen. Amen. For thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Put those things behind you. Press toward that which is before. Amen. Forget those things. Your past cannot hold you back. Come on. You can 
If you can't let go of the past. Right. Amen. Right. If you can't let go of the past, it can hold you back. Yeah. But really, that ain't the past. That's you. You won't let go of it. Amen. Yeah. You won't let go. But if you let go of it, mm -hmm. and you reach forth. Yeah. See, if you're reaching forward, yeah. you can't be reaching. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. You can't be reaching back, Brother Sleece, if you're reaching forth. Like Paul said, I press. I press toward the mark. I forget those things that are behind. Amen. I go forward. And as long as you're doing that, your past cannot drag you back. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. True. Lot's wife would have been fine had she not looked back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. True. Had she not looked back. Absolutely. Had she not, and the reason she looked back is because she longed for some of the things. Like the children of Israel out there at the Red Sea that longed for the things back in Egypt yeah. right. when things got rough. Yeah. Right. She looked back. Probably had some friends back there. Yeah. Come on. You may have walked away from some friends. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, that's, that's a lot of people probably they can't let go of their friends. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you have to hate them. I'm not saying you have to dislike them, but you don't have to hang with them. Come on. Because sometimes that ain't a good thing. Most of the time that ain't a good thing for people. Right. Because if they hang around with the things of the past, usually their past overwhelms them. Right. Verse 5 says, For thy maker is thy husband. <clears throat> the Lord of hosts is his name. Thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Amen. Verse 6 says, For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith, Thy God. When the world refused you, God called you and said, I'll accept you. Whenever the prodigal son found himself in the hall pen and his good time buddies, his party Charlies, had forsaken him and walked away, the father was at home watching for him to come up that old dusty road. Amen? You may feel like today the world has refused you. Count yourself worthy this morning. Count yourself blessed. Because he that the world has refused, God will accept. Amen? Amen. You still have a place at the table of the king today. Yes. He said, when you're refused, I'll accept you. Amen? Amen. When the world has refused you. Right. Listen to what he says in verse 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face, from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Now what's he saying here? He's talking about those times when you walk through and you just don't feel him. It seems as if he's withdrawn himself. Right. It seems as if he has hidden himself from you. He wants you to know today, Brother Rodney, that even though you can't feel him, his mercy is still present. Amen. Even though you can't see him, his presence is still with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake Amen. you. Say, Brother Billy, I feel just like I just feel like God has walked away. Well, I know for a hundred percent fact that he hasn't. Why? Because you seen him over at my house? No. Because you felt him over at my house? No. Because he told you he's with me? Oh yeah. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way to the end. Amen. Listen to me. Jesus Christ will never leave you. You count on his word. You may not be able to count on Brother Billy every time. I may tell you something, something might come up and I might not stick to my word. But if God tells you something, glory to God, you can trust him today. Amen. If, he, if you read in his book that the righteous have never been forsaken and his seed has never been begging bread, that joy comes in the morning. And even though it's dark right now, you can trust His Word today. I may not be able to depend on Brother Sleece all the time. I may not be able to depend on Brother Dave all the time. I may not be able to depend on Mom all the time. Come on. But I'm dependent on Jesus. Yes, sir. I'm dependent on Jesus. Yes. Amen. Guaranteed. He's letting you know, Brother David, whenever it seems like He ain't nowhere to be found, He's right there with you. Yes, sir. Listen to what He says in verse 9. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. 
He's talking about those that are in covenant with Him. In the Old Testament, you entered into that covenant by faith in that which was to come. We spent about eight weeks on that. In the New, in the new Covenant, as we call it, on this side, we enter into that covenant by faith in that which took place on the cross of Calvary. That which Abraham looked forward to, we look back at. Oh, hallelujah. My, my, I told you before, when you get over there and you sit down to eat an apple with Abraham and you talk to him about the good old days and you say, Abraham, how'd you make it? He'll say, I was justified by faith, just like you. Amen. I got here. Jesus has always been the only way, the only truth, and the only life. In the Old Testament, in type and shadow, in the New Testament, revealed. Right. Amen? Oh, my, my, my. I can't get on that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Covenant people. People that are by the blood covenant. Amen. I'm talking about the blood covenant. I ain't talking about some kind of earthly kingdom doctrine that's come out from left field. I'm talking about being grafted into the vine. Being an heir with Him through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to what he says in verse 20. I mean, verse 10. Boy, I'm getting really ahead of myself. Verse 10. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Can I read that one more time this morning? For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. That kind of reminds me of what Jesus said over there when he said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. My word shall remain. The mountains will be moved and sink into the sea. There will be earthquakes. There will be famines. There will be pestilence. There will be winds. There will be hurricanes. But His love and His mercy remain steadfast. His covenant with you is one that cannot be broken by anybody but you. Come on. Hello. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. I believe once saved, always saved. But I believe it's conditional upon you and your faith in Him. Right. If you choose to walk away, He ain't gonna hog tie you. Come on. Ain't gonna be no shotgun wedding. Right. Amen. You can walk away from Him. Right. He is not going to walk away from you. Listen to me. Amen. Amen. You say, but yeah, you don't know what I've done. He knows what you've done. Yes, sir. He knew what you was going to do True. before He ever accepted you, before you were ever washed in the blood. Right. Before He ever died on the cross, He knew what a mess you was going to be. Amen. Even after you got saved. Come on. He knew how much, how many wicked you might take. Yes. Amen. Come on. Don't walk away from Him because He will not. He will not walk away from you. Right. This covenant will not be broken. <laughs> Amen. Unless you're the one that does the breaking. True. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah. I love it, I love it, I love it. Drop down with me to... <clears throat> oh, drop down with me to verse... 14. Let's read these last four verses real quick here. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear... And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. A thousand shall fall at my side, David would write. Oh. Amen. Ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh my dwelling, because God, you're the one that I hope in, you're the one that I trust in. Yes. Behold, they shall, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, now listen to me. Verse 15 Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Amen. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals of the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Verse 17, this is our text for this morning. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. 
and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Oh, did you hear what he said? No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That's you. And their righteousness is of me. That's talking about your righteousness and the fact that it's of Him, saith the Lord. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. What a promise from the Word of God today. Amen. I realize it may look at times that yeah. the weapon has prospered. Oh. That it's about got you down for the count. Yeah. But that's why the Lord gives us these promises Amen. for us to sink our teeth in. Because He wants us to know regardless of the efforts of the devil to come against the people of God. Regardless of those efforts, we must realize that God is still in control. That He is still the head of all things. Yeah. We must realize that all things still work together for good. To th but I don't understand it, Brother Billy, but it don't change His Word. I don't like it, Brother Billy. I don't either. But it don't change His Word. All things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to His purpose. Amen? Wow. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord the Delivereth him out of them all. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of our Lord God. Hallelujah. We will remember the name of Jesus. Amen. If you can't remember nothing else, when you're going down, cry out, Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Save me. Yes. No weapon that is formed against you. No plot. No scheme that the devil has will prosper against oh. the servant of God. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. The kids have a saying. I don't know it. So I ain't even going to try it. It's something to do with I'm rubber and your glue. Whatever you throw at me, bounces off me and sticks to you. Something like that. Amen. Whatever the devil fires at you. And trust me, he, this discourages him. Right. He gets a little frustrated with it. Come on. But everything he tries to hurt you with just right. comes back and hurts him. Oh. Amen. True. You don't know how much it does hurt him. Right. When he's through everything at you, including the kitchen sink and the commode. Yeah. And he still finds you holding on. Yeah. Lord, I'll never let you go. I don't understand it, Lord. I don't like it, Jesus. But I'm going to stand on your word. I want to stand on your word. Have I done read the back of the book? It may look like I'm in the valley surrounded by Indians, amen. Hallelujah. And the Calvary is nowhere to be seen. But I done read the back of the book. And I know how the story ends. I'm a winner either way. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the victor and not the one going down in defeat. Because He has finished the work today. Amen. Oh, we spend so much time. Maybe I should say we waste so much time trying to win a battle that's already been, oh, that's already been won, Brother Sleeze. Hallelujah. Trying to be the devil that's already defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We spend way too much time. Because you see, every foe, every sword, spiritually speaking, now listen to me, and I'm trying to close up. I still got a bunch of notes. Every foe, Everything the devil brings against you, every sword, every plot, spiritually speaking, has already been beaten yeah. into plowshares. Now listen to me. I'm going to give you a scripture for that here in a minute. And the Prince of Peace has already given the last command. And that command was given from the cross on Calvary when he said, It is finished. You see, whenever that old song that we sing, and they'll beat their swords and weapons into plowshares, and the Prince of Peace will give the last command. 
when King Jesus comes to live with us again. You see, on the cross of Calvary, in essence, Jesus took the weapons of the enemy and beat them into plowshares. Meaning, no longer weapons to be used against you, but things that when brought against you will work for your good. A plowshare was something they used to till the land with. Right. Plant a seed. Amen. Grow a crop. Right. I wish we could get a hold of that today. Amen. That was the enemy, as Joseph said to his brothers, right. you meant it for evil, right. God meant it for good. <laughs> that which the enemy plots against you right. and says, I'm going to take him down, is only going to lift you up a little bit higher. That that he says is going to destroy him is only going to give you life. Amen? That valley that he sees as your defeat is going to be the place where you finally get your victory. Oh, hallelujah! Where you finally get your victory. Amen. Micah says, and I know this is not talking exactly about that, but I want you to hear this because this goes along with the plowshares. The principle is the same. Micah says in, four, in chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, and you don't have to go there, but... <laughs> and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall set every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. Now listen to that last part. Why is it going to be that way? Why in the millennial reign is there going to be a thousand years of peace? Why is the lion and the lamb going to lay down together? Why is there going to be no more war? Because it has been spoken out of the mouth of God. Why are you not going to be defeated today? Because you've already been, it's already been spoken from God that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who gives you the strength to go on. Amen? Come on. Why are these things not going to destroy you? Because God's Word has already purposed it, already said it, already settled it, that these things will not destroy you, but will work together for your good. Amen. When you put your faith in Him. When you allow Him to work, you'd be amazed what He can do. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Trouble is, most of the time we don't allow Him to work with us, Lisa. Mm -hmm. We get in the way too much. Yeah. Amen. But if we allow Him to do what He can do, we'd be amazed at what He can do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, we'd be, we ain't seen nothing till we get out of God's way and let God be yeah. God and quit trying. I've seen somebody with a bumper sticker said that God's my co-pilot. You better switch seats with Him. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's the one needs to be flying the plane. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He don't even need your help as a co-pilot. Oh, really? He's got this. Mm -hmm. He knows what He's doing. <laughs> oh, my Lord. He knows what He's doing. Amen. You have not been forsaken today. God has not turned His back on you. These things you're going through are not going to destroy you. As a matter of fact, if you turn them over to God, they're going to make you stronger than you were before they ever came into your life. Come on. Amen? Beat the weapons into plowshares. Give me a scripture for that, Brother Billy. Do you know why He said no weapon that is formed against you will prosper? Because whenever He died on Calvary's cross, Brother Dave, when He finished that work, that's exactly what he did with the weapons of the enemy. He beat them into plowshares. All right. He destroyed the works of darkness Amen. and the powers of darkness. I wish you'd tell me where that's at. I'm going to. Colossians, the second chapter. We've read this over and over. Colossians 2 and 14 says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's where he defeated the enemy. I'm closing. The same words I wouldn't come just yet, Brother Rod, if I was you. The words that he spoke to Joshua in Joshua 1 and 9, Brother Dave, where he said, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Right. Those words were not just for Joshua. Come on. Those words have been preserved for you today. Amen. Yes. 
for you today. He will never leave you. David, the sweet singer of Israel, wrote these words in Psalms, the seventh chapter, talking about the enemy. said, He made a pit and digged it and has fallen into the ditch which He made. Did you hear that? Amen. He goes on to say His mischief, talking about the enemy, shall return upon His own head. And His violent dealing shall come down upon His own pate. I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. The very thing that the enemy, He dug a pit for me to fall in. He fell in it Himself. The very mischief that He sent forth to attack me returned upon His own forehead. That's what God's Word says. What happened to the men that connived and schemed against Daniel to have him thrown into the lion's den? What happened to them? Daniel was spared and taken out of the lion's den alive. Those men were cast into the lion's den and killed. The lions ate them. What happened to Haman whenever he built the gallows in the book of Esther? And he schemed to have God's people destroyed. And he came against Mordecai. And he said, Mordecai won't bow down to me. I'll have him hung. I'll build gallows. The Bible says, I think it might say 50 cubits. It comes out to 75 feet high. What happened to Haman's gallows? Who swung from Haman's gallows? Haman swung from his gallows that he had, had built for, his, for God's people. Amen. Mordecai's enemy swung from the gallows that his enemy had created to hang him on. Come on. Amen. The very rope the devil's trying to trying to hang you with is going to hang him. Yes. The very weapon that he has formed against you will not prosper, but will come back upon his own forehead. Mm -hmm. hey. Get a hold of this today, and we will realize I don't have no reason to be depressed. I don't have no reason to be down. Yeah, things ain't going good. Everything's busted. Everything's broke. Waiting for the next shoe to drop. But glory to God, I'm blood wars to in covenant relationship with Jesus Christ through His precious blood. I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. Hallelujah! Oh. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus all along the way. My soul gets so happy that I shout and I sing night and day. Because everything's going good. That ain't what the song says. Because yeah. I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. I know somebody out there thinking I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Daniel's enemies suffer the very fate they plotted for him. Haman, God's people, the enemy of God's people, swings from the very rope that he had made to hang Mordecai. God's telling us today that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. I know, Brother Dave, sometimes the journey is hard. Amen. But the journey is worth the travel. Amen. Yes. It's worth every trial. True. It's going to be worth every mile. Hallelujah. I done read the back of the book. Come on. Let me tell you what it says just in case. You don't realize what's going to happen to the devil. And for those of you out there who don't know no more about the Bible than to believe that the devil's going to be in hell tormenting people and he's going to be king and ruler over hell, let me tell you what happens to him. He ain't in hell yet, but one day he's going. Revelation 20 and 10 says this about your enemy. How do you know he's my enemy? The Bible says so. The Bible says you have an adversary. Go look that word up. Amen. Brother Sleece, it says our adversary is the devil. Come on. Amen. True. He's your enemy. True. He wants to kill you. Absolutely. He don't want you having what he done lost. True. Amen. Yeah. True. He's a sore loser. Fear was one. Right. He's a loser and he won't nobody to win. That's he can't right. win no one else to. That's right. Listen to what happens to the one that attacks you on a daily basis. On. To the one that you think he's going to he's going to defeat me. No, no, no. Listen to me. His fate has already been sealed. Right. Revelation 20 and 10 says, And the devil, that's your adversary, right. that's your enemy, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever Never and ever. Amen. That's the, that's the future of the devil. Thank God. 
And if you're out there today and you're not saved, sadly, that's your future. The it's too late for him, but it ain't too late for you. Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. As long as there's breath in your body. Listen, I believe, I don't have a choice but to believe in deathbed confessions mm -hmm. when I read about the thief on the cross next to Jesus. Mm -hmm. really? Amen? Come on. Yeah. I don't have a choice to believe, but to believe that as long as there's breath in your body, if you'll call out on a merciful God and put your faith in him, you can be saved. Amen. So there's still hope for you today, but his fate's been sealed. But listen to this. So you see what happens to the devil. He's cast into the lake of fire. What about those of us, Lord, that what about those of us that are just struggling along? We're just pressing on. We're just trying to make it through this journey. Right. What's our end going to be? Amen. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. No more sorrow, no more crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Hallelujah. Brother Billy, what's the future of our enemy? He's going to go to the lake of fire. But what's our future? Are we going to make it? If you hold on to Jesus, you're going to make it. Hallelujah. To a place where there'll be no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death. He's going to wipe away every sorrow you've ever had, every tear you've ever had. Every sickness you've ever had, there'll be no more pain. Amen. Oh, my Lord. Well, that there ought to get you far. That ought, that ought to stir you a little bit today. Yes, sir. If that don't stir you bowl at all, I'd go looking for my spoon because it done fell out. Amen? Oh, Hallelujah. Wow. One of these days, we're going to be with the Lamb, and the Lamb's going to be with us. And all tears are going to be wiped away. Ain't going to be no more cancer. Ain't going to be no more arthritis. Ain't going to be no more gout. Ain't going to be no more death. Ain't going to be no more sorrow. Ain't going to be no more old age. Ain't going to be no more pain. Ain't going to be no more suffering. Hallelujah. No more funerals to go to. Amen. No more love was to say goodbye to. Come on. He's going to wipe away yeah. all of our tears. Come on, See, I done read the back of the book. Right. I know there's times that the journey seems long. I know there's times that it seems like the devil is getting a little ahead of you. I know there's times it seems like maybe Come he's on. getting you down a little bit. Maybe your back seems like it's against the wall. Come on. I done read the back of the book. Yes, sir. I just read to you the back of the book. I already know how the story ends. Amen. Praise the Dick Clifton said whenever he was a kid, he would read them old Western novels. He said he'd cheat. He'd go to the back of the book and he'd read, see how it came out. And he'd read the back of the book and he'd see that his hero rode off into the sunset. Yeah. Amen. Victor victorious. Uh -huh. So he knew. It didn't matter if chapter 5 had him in the canyon surrounded by Indians with an arrow in his chest. Come on, hurry. He done read the back of the book. Yeah. And he knew that his hero came out on top. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, let it frustrate you this morning, devil. <laughs> Uh, he probably ain't there. He probably done left and went uptown to another church. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me frustrate you this morning. Enemy, I already read the back of the book. Don't tell me I'm going to lose because I'm already a winner. Amen. Don't tell me I'm going down because I've already been promised that I'm going up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're crazy, preacher. I know it. I know it. I also know that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. Yeah. Somebody needs to get a hold of that. Come on. Somebody needs to get a hold of somebody needs to get a hold of this C D yeah. and give it to your mama and your sister and your brother and your cousins right. and everybody that's been down and out and the devil's been beaten on. Uh, let them know what the back of the book says. Amen. Oh, Don't right. just read about the truck turmoils and the strife and the long journey. Read how it all comes out. Amen. Uh, the devil's going to the fire uh, and God's people's going up higher. Amen. Uh, we're yeah. gonna be with the Lamb who is the light. And he's going to wipe away all tears Absolutely. from our eyes. Guaranteed. My, my, my. All things. The former things have passed away. Right. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And in verse 7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. 
Amen. You're more than a conqueror today. Right. The enemy cannot defeat you <clears throat> as long as you hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. As long as you keep your faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work, He's already won the victory. Come on. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something. Praise the Lord. Before we go or before I go on with the next three pages. Praise 